The Beautiful Blue World of Neptune by Joanna Hamilton and Emma Sorrentino. In this video, we aim to educate a mature audience who doesn't know much about Neptune, its satellites, its atmosphere, size, composition, and more. We will be using reputable, well-established sources to teach you about these topics. Here's a brief outline of what we'll be talk talking about in the coming slides. Location. Neptune is the eighth and farthest planet from the sun. It was discovered in 1846 by Galilei, Leverrier, and Adams. Neptune is not able to be seen by the naked eye, so they used mathematics to predict its existence before it was even physically discovered. This planet is nearly four and a half billion kilometers from the sun. That's 30 times the distance of Earth from the sun. One day on Neptune would take 16 Earth hours, and one orbit around the sun would take 165 Earth years. As a matter of fact, since its discovery in 1846, it has only completed one full orbit around the sun. Size. Neptune has the fourth largest diameter in our solar system, with a radius of 24,622 kilometers. For reference, that makes Neptune about four times wider than the Earth. It is the third most massive planet, and it is by far the densest of the giant planets. Its mass is 17 times that of the Earth, at 1.0243 times 10 to the 26 kilo kilograms. That is a huge number. Neptune has a density of 1.638 grams per centimeter cubed. Recall that the density of water is only one gram per centimeter cubed. So that makes Neptune, though it is quite gaseous, also pretty dense. Composition. At least 80% of Neptune is made up of hot, dense fluid of water, ammonia, and methane. It has a small, rocky core of silicate and iron nickel. The mantle is made of water, ammonia, and methane ices. Scientists propose there may be a hot ocean of water underneath the clouds. One of the most peculiar parts of Neptune is its rings. There are at least five of them that we know of. They are thought to be short-lived and somewhat new. The particles which compose the rings are much smaller than those of Saturn or Uranus's rings. Because of this, light reflects off of them easily, and they are very bright. Atmosphere. The term atmosphere refers to what makes up the outer layers of the planet. In the case of Neptune, this is composed of mostly hydrogen, helium, and methane. In fact, this gaseous methane is actually what makes the planet appear so blue. The methane absorbs red wavelengths of light and reflects blue ones, so what we see is actually the color that the atmosphere is projecting back to us. Neptune is the windiest planet in our solar system, with some reaching over 2,000 kilometers per hour. On Earth, we consider catastrophic Category 5 hurricanes to be those with winds of greater than 250 kilometers per hour. So imagine if we had Neptune strength winds here on Earth. As seen in this picture, the crazy winds make the clouds striated or stripe-like in nature. Unsurprisingly, this windy climate causes frequent large storms on the planet. Notably, a massive storm called the Great Dark Spot was discovered in 1989. It was large enough to completely encapsulate the Earth. This storm, as seen in the lower hemisphere, has since subsided as the high winds on the planet cause frequent shifts in the atmospheric particles. However, many more storms have been discovered since, and many more storms will arise. Satellites and moons. Neptune has at least 14 moons. The planet and its satellites are named after Greek mythology. Neptune's biggest moon, Triton, is the most interesting, and it was discovered shortly after Neptune itself. 
Because Triton has a retrograde orbit, scientists hypothesize it could have been captured by Neptune. It could even be from the Kuiper Belt where Pluto is located. Despite Triton's extremely cold temperature, it has several active geysers, suggesting tectonic activity. These geysers spray material at least five miles upwards. It is one of the few known volcanically active bodies in the solar system. Research. In 1977, the NASA Voyager mission released two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and 2. They had two main objectives. They wanted to study Jupiter and Saturn and their moons, and then travel to interstellar space to report data. On its way to deep space, Voyager 2 passed close to Neptune and its moon Triton. In 1989, it sent back to Earth the clearest pictures we have of these celestial bodies to date. This was the closest any spacecraft has ever gotten to Neptune. Unlike Mars, we, do, we have not been able to land a rover on the surface because the atmosphere and surface composition, as described earlier, would make it very difficult. We also have yet to re release a satellite into its orbit since it is just so far away. This means that Neptune is actually one of the least studied planets in our solar system. Most of the knowledge we have about it has been discovered via telescopic science and mathematics. However, NASA scientists are growing more and more interested in the planet. In a recent proposal, a rover called Trident would land on Triton to research various aspects of Triton's curious surface. It is possible that this moon might have water ice, which would be somewhat surprising. But where there is water, there is potential of life, so scientists are very intrigued by this idea. Although Neptune is one of the least researched planets, it could have lots of valuable, valuable information to learn about its moons, rings, atmosphere, and more. In the coming years, we're sure that there will be many more discoveries that may change the way we view our solar system. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can send us an email as listed below.